In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about using APIs in Python. So if you don't know what an API is, it is an acronym that stands for Application Programming Interface. So what it does is that it's a server that allows you to receive and send data using code. So for example, using Python in this case. So if in the most of, most of the time, you actually use an API to basically retrieve data, let's say from another web application or maybe to even send data and then get a response after. So for example, let's say, I'm gonna give you a new stars of an API. So let's say we have an application that has been built and you want to access the data in that application. Let's say like you wanna access data like the amount of views that application gets or the amount of customers that application has. The owner of that application can create an API that allows you to access those data if the owner of the application wants. So there are you know, various APIs on the internet and you can also create your own API. But in this tutorial, we're gonna be talking about how to use API. So how to basically get responses and retrieve data from an API. So right here, I have this demo API that I created a while ago. And what it does is that it just has data about, you know, different names and their age. So this says Tim and age 27, this says Tom and age 16, this says Jim and 19. So it just has this data and that's what it is. There are of course more advanced APIs out there, but for this tutorial, this is what we're gonna be using. So I'm gonna show you how to access this, you know, this API that we have right here. So to do this, we need a Python library called requests. So you need to go into your terminal and type, just gonna open up, my terminal right here. So I'm gonna run this to open up the terminal and then delete this. And let's say we want to run pip3 install requests. Once you run this, it's gonna install requests for you. For me, it says requirement already satisfied. That's because I have requests installed already. So once you run that, it's gonna install requests for you. And you're gonna use request to actually send a request to the API that you wanna retrieve. So what we're gonna do now is to first import request and it's with an S. And then what we're just gonna do is to send a get request to this particular API. So as you can see, this is built using the Django REST framework. You don't need to know about that for now, but it basically just allows us to, you know, have this good looking interface that has details about the API. So you can see that it uses a get method what we can do now is to say request dot get why isn't the get method let's just close this and we want to send a request to so i'm just going to get out of that you open a bracket and then you have quotes and in there you're going to send a request to the link of that particular api or we call it the you can say is the api endpoint that's the url that has all the details we need so this is the endpoint that we're sending a request to and let's get the let's store whatever we you know get as a response in a variable named response i'm going to say all of this is equals to response so this is very easy very straightforward and how to create a request then what you can just do now is to just say response dot status code so once you say response dot status code let's actually print this it's going to show us the status code of this and i'm going to tell you what that means right here you can see that it shows 200 so each resp each status code has its meaning so if we get 200 this means that you know everything went okay and then we've gotten a response if there was any response we've gotten that response there are, there is um 301 there is you know 400 there is 401 there is 403 there is 404, which you might have known because it's a popular error code. And I think there's 503 also. So each of these has their meaning. The 301 means that the server is kind of taking you to another endpoint. That's what it means. And for this, um, this is 400, not 100. So 400 basically means that we made a bad request. So this means maybe we're not sending the right data that we need. Well, it just means we made a bad request. And 401, this happens when you require... When it requires authentication, it requires you to be authenticated, but you are not authenticated. So that's when we get a 401 error. And 403, it basically doesn't give you access to, you know, 
doesn't give you access to access this particular API. Basically, it means like you're forbidden and you don't have the right to access that data. That's what it means. And 404 just means that the endpoint or the URL that we're trying to send a request to does not exist. So that's what it just means. So it wasn't found. And 503 means that if the server is not ready to undo your request, so maybe it's getting too much request or it's just down for that point. So it means it's not ready to undo that request. So that is what all of this means. But as you can see, we got 200. And as I explained, 200 means that everything is okay and we got the response that we actually need. So once we have that, what I can just do next is to actually, you know, print the response that we got. So as you know, this is what is being contained in this particular API. So once we print the response, we should get, that means we print the data of the response, we should get that data right there. So to do this is very easy. What I can just do is to say print and I'm just going to say response. I'm just going to get out of that dot text. So once I print response dot text and run this, you're going to see that it prints all of this in like a list. So it says name Tim age 27. That is one data name Tom age 16. That is another data. And as you can see, Tim 27, Tom 16. So that is a basic way of, you know, just printing this. So let's say, you know, we want to go for that. We want to be able to use this data because right now it just is it as a string. Let me show you what I mean. So let's say we do something like for res in response dot text, right? And then we just say print res. So because it's a list, you're going to expect that it prints each of these separately, but no, it's not going to do that. See what it's going to print. Let me comment this out. And once I run this, you see that it prints every single character, every single letter separately. Now, this is because it sees this as just one string. So it see, prints everything as one, like every single character separately. But what we want to do is to change this response into a JSON format so we can actually use it as a recognized data type. So for me to do this, I need to import the JSON library that is pre-installed with Python. I'm just going to say import JSON. And once I import JSON, what we need to do is to say, so right here, I'm actually going to get rid of this print. It's going to get rid of that. And I'm going to say something like response. Now I'm going to say res equals response.text, right? But I'm going to say json.loads. So what this is doing is that it loads this response or it loads this text that I get and it kind of converts it into a JSON format. So now that we know we have this in a JSON format, let me just comment this out for a bit. And I can just print res. And once I print res and run this, if I come here, you can see you don't really see the difference yet because it still looks similar to how it shows before. But the difference now is that once I try to loop through it, so let me just comment this out, so just remove this. And I can say for data in res, print data so i'm going to remove this now once i'm looping through this res and i run this you can now see that it doesn't print every single character separately it prints every data separately now this is just a basic way of you know getting data or retrieving data from a particular api so as you can see what we did was import request and import json then we sent a request to this particular api endpoint and then, yeah, we're just printing the status code to see if everything went good, if everything was successful. And we got the text from that response, which is the data that we retrieved. And we converted it into a JSON format. And then we looped through all the data because now it's in a JSON format. It's in a recognizable data type. And then we printed every single data. So this is a basic intro to using APIs in Python.